Hi everybody. I just wanted to thank everybody for the amazing feedback that I got and such the, such the, for all the positive support and it just means a lot to me and I appreciate it. Um, so today I have my pre-op appointment. Um, so basically that consisted of me signing the consent form and them explaining all of the surgery. So before I even explain the surgery, um, for the past couple of weeks, they put me on prenatals, uh, vitamin D, and birth control pills. So the prenatals, that's what a lot of people who are trying to get pregnant um, take anyway, and you're also supposed to take it when you are pregnant. Um, vitamin D, they just said for me to take that because a lot of people are vitamin D, vitamin D deficient, so I'm taking that. And then birth control pills, so I wouldn't get pregnant before the surgery, because that would be bad. And it also helps the lining of the uterus to get thinned out. So April 11th is my surgery date, which is like uh, eight days away. Today is Tuesday the 3rd, yeah. Um, so the day before they're going to call me with the surgery time and I'm having that done. I'm not telling you where I'm getting it done because that's weird because I'm putting it on YouTube and you don't need to know that. Anyway, so how the surgery is done. So it's done through hysteroscopy, which means they go up the vaginal canal, open up the cervix, and um, basically go inside my uterus. Um, also forgot to do a TMI out there, so if there's any kids watching and you don't want to hear about all of this, then turn it off. So what they do is they use surgical scissors and they kind of just cut away right at the center of the septum. Um, they don't take the septum out. So they cut away and then the posterior and the anterior walls of the uterus kind of like come apart. And um, when it heals, the endometrium lining just covers that and it's basically a normal uterus. Um, so since I have a partial septate, um, they are worried about perforating the uterus, which is, you know going through the uterus and into the abdomen, they that's a no-no. Um, so they were talking about possibly doing a, a laparoscopy. So that's basically a small, tiny incision through the abdomen and they are able to look at the fundus or the top of the uterus while they're going in that way. Um, So after I'm all done with my surgery, I'm going to be under uh, general anesthesia, which I think might be the first time that I've ever been under that. So I'm kind of a little nervous for that. Um, so what I've read online is a lot of people have to get balloon catheters put in their uterus. Um, so you know what a catheter is. It goes in, but then the, the balloon is blown up to the size of the uterus with saline. Um, so that is a possibility, but um, the doctor said that my septum is small enough where they're not really exactly worried about it because a balloon catheter prevents scar tissue and it keeps the walls from the uterus collapsing. But like I said, since my septum isn't that big, I think they said it's like two centimeters. I don't know. No, that sounds really small. I don't remember what they said. Um, but anyway, they're not worried about it. So I might get a balloon catheter. I might not. Um, this is all like playing it by ear once they're in there. Like I had to consent for basically everything under the sun. I had to get consent to get polyps getting taken out. If they find one, that's fine. I don't need them. Um, Let's see. Okay, so I also read online that it's a possibility that they don't get the entire septum with one surgery. Now, I think that's mostly for complete septum uteruses. So 
I don't think I'm going to worry about that either. I'll probably only have one. Um, it's also a possibility that scar tissue will form and the septum reforms with scar tissue, which is a terrible thought. I really don't want that to happen. Um, let's see. If I am put on a balloon catheter, if I do have a balloon catheter put in, I'll be on antibiotics and estrogen for, I think, a month. Um, well, not antibiotics for a month. That's a really long time. I will only have the balloon catheter for like three to five days. It's not that long. Um, but the antibiotics are obviously to prevent infection and the estrogen. I don't know what that is for either. Probably should have read up on that before I made this video. Anyway. Um, so if I don't have a balloon catheter, I'll just end up healing on my own with I don't know. I might get put on birth control pills again. I don't know. See, this is all, it, it it's all playing it by ear. It's what she looks at when she's in there. So it's all up in the air at this point. Um, I just know what I might be expecting. Whatever. Um, so if everything is good to go after and everything follows the right path, we're good to try after a month, which after all the reading and research I've done, I heard the average is two months, but a month sounds good to me. Um, I think, I don't know. There's, I don't, I have nothing else to say. This is a much shorter video than the last one. Um, yeah. So I'll keep everybody updated. I'll probably make another video after my surgery to kind of follow up. Um, yeah, thanks for listening again. Um, have a good day.